Donc, euh, je suis Philippe de Massive Interactive, je suis UI Engineering Manager et euh, on fait pas mal de hacks, comme je pense que vous le savez maintenant. Oh, am, am I speaking in French? <laughs> All right. Um, so, let, let's talk about uh, hacks and React and about leveraging everything that is done in the JavaScript community. Um, so there are literally hundreds of thousands of public things you can reuse, open source. Um, it's the most active language on GitHub, um, Google, Facebook, Microsoft, everybody throws money at JavaScript developers to do things. So, I mean, so there's a lot of activity um, some good, some bad, but globally we can say that, that we should totally leverage what they're doing because th there are good things that come out of that. Uh, although some people think that you can't code anything complex in JavaScript, well, people do it. It's, you, they, they do a lot of unit testing and this kind of things and it works. Um, so you have to do it, you have to start even if we're all uh, hacks enthusiasts, you have to start understanding what they're doing, how it works. So you have to get into JavaScript, play with JavaScript, play with the libraries. Um, and well, basically, everything that you have in the JavaScript world, you can use it in hacks. Um, you, you can check a few examples on my blog, a few, a few old articles about in, interacting with JavaScript. It's quite easy. Um, so, let's have a plan. Um, we'll talk about React and we'll get a bit further around cut splitting around the JavaScript bundlers and try to put all that together into something that will blow your mind. Right? Um, so, React. Um, it's a cool thing these days. Um, if you're not into heavy framework and this kind of things. Um, so, the JavaScript boy is very, very uh, enthusiastic about that. Uh, really, it's a view template. So, literally, this is only a view template. It doesn't tell you how you architect your, your project. Uh, and that's how it looks in JavaScript. It's like XML in your JavaScript, literally. Uh, and it's called JSX. Uh, obviously, this is not valid JavaScript. So it has to be transformed, and it is transformed into that. React, create element, the tag, an object with the attributes, and the children elements. Uh, so that is, that is quite straightforward to understand. Um, you can add some binding. It's unidirectional, so you can pull values. You can have JavaScript expressions. Um, it, it should remind you with hacks, uh, string interpolation. Um, so as I said, so to sum up, it's a virtual DOM engine. So it takes care of rendering your DOM. So it's a view template. You can bind data and refresh and it will handle the refresh of the DOM. Um, it doesn't detect your architecture. So you, and this is, I'd say one of the uh, let's say uh, complexity of React is that it doesn't give you any architecture. So you have to find, to figure and pick one architecture. That's what they are. Hundreds of ways to architect React applications. Um, but quite, quite, cl quite clearly, um, we are using it and we're doing uh, mediators injection with React. So whatever the, the, your approach, is it MVC, is it uh, the kind of flux architecture you have in JavaScript, it, it all works. And it is very easy to pick up for developers. That, that is very straightforward. 
Plus, there's a longer term potential, which is React Native. Um, and the idea is that instead of driving DOMs, you can drive native views. Um, so it is quite a, a powerful and, and great potential, although it has big trade-offs. Um, so like Titanium Accelerator, it's kind of the same system. You have just the JavaScript VM running uh, the your UI logic and preparing the, the, the templates for the view you want. It passes that to the, to the native side and that takes care of rendering, creating the native views. Um, obviously, the problem is that if you only know JavaScript, you will quickly hit the problem that you need to go and make some Objective-C and Java and whatnot to get things further than the basic components. Uh, so, with Hacks, Hacks React, which was first experimented by Franco, um, our masters in the JavaScript assimilation plan. And uh, we rebuilt that with David Peake uh, completely. <clears throat> um, so we have everything. We have the full typing, uh, uh, full parsing, and, and generic code generation. Um, so it looks a bit like that. We, we are not allowed to have a DSL in Hacks, so we have to put that in a string. Um, that, that's okay. I think it's, it's looking fine. Uh, it, it's ba barely more verbose than in JavaScript. Um, you can have the same binding syntax as in React, so you can literally copy paste stuff from sam React samples. And it also supports uh, string interpolation syntax. So those are something, or braces. The advantage is that IDEs support code completion for those variables. Uh, so that's quite handy. Uh, so you have uh, code completion for that. Um, oh, and back to that. So here we just have a div, but the principle of React is that instead of a div, you can use a class a class that will extend a React component and that will have a render function. So you can have the templating in depth with sub-templates, basically, basically with hacks classes. Um, so the JSX parser is complete. Uh, it has a few limitations, like you lose white space. Um, if you have HTML with binding, uh, it, it will lose the white space uh, between the words. Um, around the, the binding, bound element. Uh, you can work, work around that, but we need to improve it. Uh, we support advanced features. So there's, if you start looking into React documentation, you will hear about uh, the spread operator, and uh, you may even scratch further and find about uh, the optimized inlining. So instead of having, instead of having um, React create element, you can replace that with a literal JavaScript object. So that's no function calls, no logic, figuring how to prepare this element. Um, so yeah, it's, it's very advanced. It's, it's up to par with the, the, the advanced Babel version that does the, all these kind of optimizations. And uh, it's even able to replace, to use the inline version, even if you use yourself manually the React create element, it can replace your React create elements by the inline syntax automatically. Uh, it could quite well be um, extended to other DOM, virtual DOM engines. There's one popular, like virtual DOM, uh, or maybe someone has a hacks one. Um, if if it does the kind of same like React create element, we can we could we could do it. I'm not sure how the plugin system would look, but it's possible. Um, fancier highlighting. So uh, so Jeremy has worked on Atom JSX highlighting. So that's hacks with the JSX highlighting. It is looking beautiful. We would not be able to have that in Flash develop. Uh, hacks develop, but hey, uh, some people can have it. Um, 
So how do you use that in your project? Um, you basically just do an hacks.js project. No third party things, no fancy bundling and stuff. And you can just use the JavaScript in your HTML page. You have to compile with React Global. And we use the global expose React classes. And that's all, it just works. And the, the alternative is to use the JavaScript require, uh, which so far you don't need to. So you can just do that and use it right now without worrying about more, more of the JavaScript ecosystem. Um, so I'd say generally it works. React is, pro Re React is production ready. Uh, the, the macro works. I have a few people who have uh, tried uh, the, who try constantly our library with their projects. Uh, so there's a few, there are a few users of the library. So you, you can just use it and we, I could stop the presentation now and you could go and use React, but we're going to try to go a bit further, right? So um, we're going to touch some uh, sensi sensitive points. So is your application a monolith? Is it a big fat binary? So on the web, uh, at some point, your app gets big, gets fat, gets big, uh, and you want to have the fastest uh, presentation to the user of the application of what is useful for him. He doesn't need to, lo to load megabytes of JavaScript if you he, if he just want to show the home page. Um, and um, so this is a practice that is evolved in, in JavaScript, uh, you know, at some point, everybody was just having lots of JavaScript files. Then people started to concatenate, minify them. Um, and now it's back to splitting that. And so this concept of dependency, dependency graph, optimizing entry points. So if you enter the home page or if you enter the, um, some product page, you, you don't need to load the code that is not relevant for you, for the user. And um, I think we can follow this practice in hacks uh, without sacrificing too much. Um, uh, right, so for the sake of completeness, I mentioned modular JS and to avoid confusion. So this is one project that aims to work, to make hacks work better with JavaScript. Uh, so this one is kind of crazy. It's kind of a futuristic approach. It generates one JavaScript file for each hacks class. And then you use a JavaScript bundler to put that back together into one or more bundles. So more on that later. Um, that, that's, that for, I think that there is enormous potential. Um, but for now, I'm going to show you uh, what I've done on modular hacks. Um, so it works, again, the idea is to break a monolithic application into um, several modules. And uh, we want to do that fully typed. We want to just have one code base. We just want to have over complicated uh, build systems or, uh, or complicated code to use the bundles. So uh, the natural fit of that is if you can architect your application with, with modular, modularity in mind, because here's what we're going to do is, uh, so we have to cheat a bit on the JavaScript output, but, uh, so how it works. The basic is that you exclude things you don't want. So you will compile your application several times, excluding and including what you want. So you compile the main app, excluding the modules, then you compile the modules, excluding shared code, and you just have to annotate with at expose the classes that you will want to be merged into the final application when everything's on at runtime. So the, the JavaScript output is patched to allow that. And it's really, if you have done Flash, if you're familiar with runtime shared libraries, it's the same idea. You load, you split your application into several JavaScript files, you load them, and at runtime they just merge their scope. They join their scope. Um, and, the, and, and to use it, it's really simple. Like you literally can import your module classes 
and you just have to make sure that you go through require module to load the module then when it's loaded it's already merged and usable so this it, it's I, I believe it's the simplest way to use a module like it's absolutely natural and uh, I've even added a little helper in this system where if you, when you load a module you can load a CSS file as well of the same name and so you can even have split your CSS for all your main modules and you can load just them as, as you need. Um, and the CSS is friendly with tools like Live Reload. So if you change the CSS file of one module, Live Reload will reload it um, live in your application. So there's pretty good potential here. Uh, we didn't use it yet, but uh, I, th I think there's nothing too risky uh, in using it. I've tested, I fixed it, uh, adjusted a bit for Hacks 3.3, .3, so it works with uh, Hacks 3.2 and 3.3. .3. Um, let's see, maybe, maybe we'll have more compiler support to do that natively because I, I think that, that could be quite interesting uh, instead of doing the patching, which is a bit awkward. Uh, limitations, it's not designed for granularity. And you, you don't want to exclude, expose tens or hundreds of classes. Plus, you can't change existing hacks libraries. So if you use msignal, it's not exposed. So msignal will be duplicated in every module if you, in, so you will have redundancy. Um, so it, it's a trade-off that can be acceptable. Um, uh, you have to work with, we have to think about that, about how you architect your application. Uh, but now I'm going to ask you the, the million dollar question. Can you guess now what would work beautifully with this system? React. React is a perfectly packaged and external dependency. It's the main dependency you need to build your view, your, your application. And then you can modularize the pages or complex components. And you know that you will just need to expose these two components and the rest can, can uh, live on the back of the, the, what React gives you as infrastructure to, um, to, to put together the components. And, and to pass around information and these kind of things. And hopefully you will have very little redundancy and the effort to do the exclusion and expose would be very small. Uh, so I don't have an example. So I have an example of modular loading. I don't have one for React, but we'll, we'll get almost to that soon. <clears throat> Now, so far, we, we've been very prudent. We've stayed far, uh, as far as JavaScript ecosystem we could. We just have like a JavaScript library. We got like a React. Um, but we have, to, we have to get there. Uh, we, we have to let a bit of uh, JavaScript into your heart. Uh, accept it. Uh, so let, let's talk about NPM. So, um, I think a lot of you are familiar with that. It's the package manager, that's the way you uh, acquire and manage dependencies from the JavaScript world. So really, learn it, tame it, it's unstoppable, and it's, it's quite useful. It has a huge repository of tools. Uh, for instance, I, I haven't installed Apache for years because I just HTTP serve uh, using a, an NPM module. Um, I think that's Carlos for JTrans that was showing, uh, using it to uh, show his demos. It's incredibly, you know, it's, it's very rich. It has a lot of things you don't have. To, it's, most, it's usually cross-platform. So it's, it's great command line tools. Uh, it just, it must, must just work. Um, so NPM is the first thing. The second part is that we need, uh, you don't just require React. <laughs> Uh, you have to get into the module systems. So module systems, common JS is the most common because it is what is in Node.js. 
It is synchronous by design, so it is not browser friendly. It has to be transformed. Here we require React, which is a module, and we require a, a file called counter, which will be a JavaScript file relative to where you sit. It's always relative or it's an NPM module like React. Um, so it's quite natural fit for hacks. Um, you make an external class, then you annotate with JS require, and here you go, you have the module. You, you have written the JavaScript equivalent of require. That, that works perfectly fine, no issues. Good job. Um, the other module system is AMD, and as you can see, AMD is asynchronous. Um, confusingly, require.js is an AMD loader, and it's not a common JS loader. Um, so they are loaders, and uh, they, they can work, they're, they're friendly with the browser, so they work with the browser without bundling, but you can, and you probably want to bundle them into one JavaScript file. And this is what modular.js generates. So, yeah, you mean, we're making JavaScript, writing JavaScript, but we need to transform it, we need to bundle it, so basically we're compiling JavaScript. Um, so, module bundling. Um, so, there are many module bundlers. Most of them can load both CommonJS and AMD. Uh, the bundlers take dependencies, so they build a dependency tree. They take the dependencies and put them together into one or more modules, bundles. And the terminology is to say the, term, the dependencies are loaded by loaders. And these loaders don't necessarily load just code, though they can load CoffeeScript, uh, TypeScript, Babel, all those are loaders, but you can also load raw text, uh, HTML, JSON, CSS, or even images, which gets us back a bit more to the Swift world. Uh, but that's the idea. You basically put together your assets and it's all readily synchronously available. Uh, they have quite a cool thing around images where small images, you can literally embed them as data 64. So that makes, that's barely bigger than a normal image and it's synchronously available at any time and it uh, doesn't do HTTP requests. That's, that's pretty cool. Um, so, let's choose one. So, you will, if you if you have the chart, the slide, you can go to this website. Um, um, so, what do we have? I, I took uh, three bundlers, with, which were the most popular. So, you have Browserify, which is the old one. Like, it's not cool for the JavaScript developers. Uh, they, they there's a lot of misinformation, so they think it's it doesn't do much because it's not batteries included. But in fact, it's the fastest, the smallest, the leanest, and it's just as capable of all the others. Um, so you, you will be able to go to this website and, and just look at the explanation of how to do the, the things that people usually don't think are possible. I really like it, it's a, it's a really light one, uh, but the, the truly most popular is Webpack. Even if you're not in JavaScript, you may have heard about it, really. Uh, it's the most popular cutting edge. It's probably used by Facebook, you know. Uh, it has many, it has batteries included, so it has all the loaders out of the box. And it is, to say the least, um, cumbersome to configure. It is offensive to configure. But hey. Uh, JSPM is the, is a, it's not a new one, it has a renewed popularity. Uh, it used to be slow, so it has bad rep. Um, and it's based on system.js, so it can handle dynamic loading, so without bundling. And um, it's very simple and has very powerful code splitting using arithmetic. So you say, I want module one with all the dependencies minus module three and all its dependencies, but plus module four with its dependencies, and it just makes you one 
JSC5 with everything in it. That's pretty smart. So using hacks, take anything, really. It works. This, uh, they, they all handle require, so it will just work. Um, I have a little something for Brotherify because, you know, if you install Brotherify, it, it, uh, it, it waits like a, a megabyte and a half, and Webpacks and the others are like 20, 30, 40 megabytes. So that's the, I like it. Um, all right, so now, what if I told you you can hot reload code in JavaScript? <laughs> hot module replacement. So if you don't want to be complete has-been in the JavaScript world, then you do hot reload, like a live reload, module replacement, that's a word. Um, <clears throat> I mean, yeah, if you want to exist nowadays or in the, the, in the close future of JavaScript, you, you have to do that. And even for hacks, I mean, if we don't do that, I mean, that, that's one other nail on the coffin of being something that can have a, a little bit of popularity. Um, so all these bundlers support that. Um, and for the code, it's not that magic, you have to handle it. You have to explicitly have the logic of handling the fact that some classes have been reloaded. So when that happens, you have to say, all right, I need to re-instantiate this class. Um, and typically, this is used with React. So if we put together hacks, modular hacks, React, and hot reload, and webpack, because we're cool here, and then we, we can hopefully have something that even can work. What the hell? Stop mentioning me. Um, all right. Let's try to do that. I said stop. Here we are. Is it vaguely readable? I'm going to make it slightly bigger. All right. <clears throat> so, Webpack Hot Reload. Um, and uh, the basic of, web, of React is that you have to do a React DOM render of your root application, and you tell it in what DOM element you want to render. And uh, using require, JS require, is it big enough? You can import the, um, you can import the hot reload container that we take care of reloading your view, your hacks, your React view code. So when you will change views, it will take care of re-rendering the DOM <coughs> with your changes in the classes. Um, here I'm using both hot reload for the rendering and I'm using modular hacks to load the views. So it's, it's loading the view, so I'm using modular hacks to create different bundles. So I have the main bundle and the view bundle. And with Webpack Ensure, we can lazily load a module or more modules, and then we can re-render. Um, <clears throat> so that's the... So that's the flow of, inform of, of events. Like first it loads, um, loads the view, renders it, and if there's a change, if we need to hot reload the views because we have changed our views, then we will re-require using Ensure the newly uh, loaded, the, the newly changed module. So it will be evaluated and merged in the scope. And when that is done, you can re-render. So that's the loop. Change code, the view changes, we have a hot reload, we render. That's about as simple as that. 
um, it, it's possibly slightly even more, um, I'd say, clean, even cleaner than in JavaScript. Uh, but the, 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 the syntax is similar. Um, <clears throat> so now, how to run that? So I'm going to, so uh, we have to npm, npm, npm start. So when doing that, we're starting the um, React, the Webpack dev server, which is hot reload capable. Um, come on. Uh, NPM tends to be, to be a bit slow to wake up. Um, so it's going to serve that. And on the same side, uh, on the other side, I want to have automatic compilation of, right, it's ready. See, it's, it has gotten, gotten all the dependencies, it's all the modules, like there's a crap lot of modules. And uh, at the end, it has created a bundle and a second bundle with, with our views. And now we want to automatically build our views every time we change them, so we can use the So we can use Hacks Watchify, uh, created by Lucas, uh, which allows us to watch the views directory and rebuild just the views JavaScript file. So now it's monitoring uh, the, the code. Um, I'm going to load that. So uh, it's it's a bit ugly, but that is the canonical example of of uh, hot reload. Eek! All right. Um, so now, if I take the let's say the counter and the app, so that is right. We we have here. You can see we have an expose because the app is exposed. So if I check in the, here in the main app, I'm, I'm referencing app here. By doing that, this is a way to use the, it's even import, imported here. I think I need more space. So import view app, view app is in the module and it's going to be rendered by the React. It's going to be rendered by React uh, the app does just lay out a counter class. So that's an example of <clears throat> using a pure render React function. So you can create a function. It has to have a, an uppercase, otherwise it will not be picked up as, um, as a, a component. Um, so this is a pure render. I need to make that even bigger. No? Tell me. Uh, so this is a pure render function. You, you can use a function in your uh, JSX and it just receives the properties and then you can return a chunk of DOM or virtual DOM. Um, so that is a React way to provide children. So we're providing the counter. The counter is here. It doesn't need to be exposed because really we just need to expose the app. And the counter is something that just counts. You know, we are at, uh, already on almost two minutes counting. So as it's React, it has a state, it has a mount. When we mount, we create a counter, we create a timer to count. Uh, if the component would be unmounted, we would stop the counter. And when the counter ticks, it increases its count value. So it changes its state. And when it changes its state, React will re-render the DOM and, and update just what has to be updated. And uh, here we just including the state.counter, so the count, counter value. That, 
should be fairly simple. And now the the the, the most surprising thing is that well, it works. It works, and I and now I should be able to be with me. I should be able to make a change. Like, can I add an HR here? Is what if you're working? Yeah. Oh, see, the HR has appeared, so I can remove it and add it. And you can see. We have reloaded the entire view JavaScript generated by Hacks. And we have the React view has not lost its, its state. So it's still counting. And we have changed this very class. It, it, it is able to, and I, I can do even more. So, and, and that's where it's slightly like uh, mind, mind blowing is that if I want to count more, so we have a timer, right? It has its own state as a class property, and now if I change this tick function, it's going to count by 10. So it is compatible with hacks closures, with the binding, and live updating the, the functions of your code. Like, th this is truly, truly crazy, right? Let's add some styles. All right, let's add a yellow background. If I, if I call that correctly, it's time. All right. I don't want to brag, but <laughs> let's add another component. So I have another React component, which is a button. And uh, I think we, we, we need to, um, let's add an on-click handler. So I think when adding the unclick handler, I think we, um, so it should get the, I think that's a, a single case where you need to reload the page. So I'm going to reload now and I probably mistyped it. On click. All right. Uh, what do you mean? Oh, yeah, yeah, it should trace. Yeah, yeah, it will trace. So it says clicked. And it also increases the state by 100, right? Or maybe I want to just include that, increase that by, or maybe let's reduce that, All right? Let's say app is up to date, and now we're going to decrease. All right? Is that it? Sounds good? Uh, I don't know how it will scale with large React applications, but I think there's quite a good potential. It's, it's currently a bit lazily overriding all the classes of the view module. And potentially, we could have something smarter that just reloads, uh, like that just insert new, the classes that actually changed. But for that, we would need to, from the compiler to tell us what are the classes that changed. Like to be able to, to or have a way to diff uh, somehow the classes to see which one changed. Uh, so we could optimize the, the update work. So, but yeah, that's it.
Uh, you mentioned previously the React Native. Yes. Uh, have you tested this uh, solution with the React Native as well? As far as I know, there is an extended wrapper that needed. I, I know some people tried it, and it works. So the, it, it just works. Um, there's, there's a very big repository of, um, as well, of classic uh, common React components from the JavaScript community. So they are extents for a whole lot of um, components. So there's, there's a lot of reuse, reusability, and it can all be bundled together so you don't have to write that. Um, if I, hey Jeremy, special daddy case. Um, issues. Um, so that's quite an active uh, repository with a lot of people. Um, extends. So yeah, if you check, check here. So Zabriel has made a huge repository of add-ons. So you have routing, redux, uh, swiping, tapping, authentication, material UI, internalization, forms. Uh, all of that you can just do nothing but use the components and there we work. And that would make your view, your hacks view JS even lighter if you use these, these ones. So that, that's all, all for your benefit. Okay, cool, thanks. I have another one. Uh, I know that React has uh, like a store of uh, UI extension that you may use on the uh, React Native and on React itself. They're always adding to the new feature like scroll bars and uh, so on. May I expect to use them or some other uh, tool that uh, making them to hacks or should, I, should each one be made separately? You, you probably will need to have some, doing some effort of creating this, uh, this extents, but they're usually, I mean, as I, sh as I, as I showed, uh, even a complex, so React Router is like a complex one and you just need a few, uh, a few, so that's a route. And literally just you have to do is to write one class that says, you know, just require, require React Router route and uh, that's about it, you have it. <coughs> There's, there's nothing to do here. Um, I, I didn't mention some of the things, but um, so as it is uh, based on hacks, it is absolutely fully typed, so you can, you can work in a rather untyped way, or you can work in a very typed way. So you have the base class React component, which is fully dynamic, but then you can really go very far in typing your component props, component state, component reference, and combinations of those. Um, so you, you can be very, you can be strongly typed. You don't have to write the, the uh, annotations for runtime for verifying the arguments because we do that at the compilation level using, by typing the properties that you can receive by typing, typing the state, etc. Okay, we, we've got uh, some question on Twitch. Uh, first is, what advantages are there of using Axe over TypeScript for coding React? Mm -hmm. And have you used React alongside Axe graphic toolkits? And if so, what problem did you encounter? Uh, what, what advantages? Well, we, we just use Axe because we want to use it, right? Uh, a, you know, as I just said, everything you can do in JavaScript you can do in hacks, and the opposite is true. Uh, you, you can still do old school JavaScript if you want. Um, so we, we just want, so one of the advantages is the typing. Um, and um, what was the other question? Uh, did you use it with Axe graphic toolkits of any sort? And Axe if graphic so, toolkits. what problem did you encounter? Uh, is, is that you mean with uh, Hacks UI or I what? So. Yeah, I don't think it, I mean, maybe it could work with Hacks UI, but I'm not sure. It, I, I, I think they have different approaches. 
So for Hacks UI, maybe you would have something like MXML to define your UIs. It's a lot less, uh, React is about re really generating DOM and Hacks UI wants to let you use native components or different backends. So it's kind of a different goal. It looks like actually it was uh, talking about OpenFL and CAR or such thing. You, you, you can, you, you can create, you would have to do a virtual DOM for them. And if you have a virtual DOM, then you could adapt the J6 generator to generate objects for this DOM. And you, you will have to make, handle the diffing and all that. So the React, although really, no, although you could, no, no you, can, you can literally use React for the diffing of non, I mean, there's already a React for Canvas, so um, I think you could use that as well for your hacks component and have your, uh, you need to write the code that handles the, the last step after the diffing to apply the properties or create elements uh, or to rearrange elements. So yes, yeah, you can do it. You can use React for that. Okay, and one last question. Uh, are you taking into account inline code changes and also your clock is one hour behind? <laughs> That's the <a> question. <laughs> yeah. You know, it's London time. Um, and what, what are the inline changes? Like what? You mean inline code changes? Yeah, I or? think uh, if you've got uh, one variable in line, and if you change it, is it taking into, into account? Uh, I mean, you, you can just... I think the question is rather when you modify the methods that the Oh, inline method. Obviously not, because what, is, what has been inlined in the made code is inline forever. Obviously, if it's inline, it's inline. Well. <laughs> hmm. Nope. If there's an error in your code, uh, it will, so you will watch a file that says, oh, there's an error, a compilation error. So it doesn't, it doesn't get to your browser. So you have to fix it. And when it's working, then it will be uh, updated in the browser. You don't need to use the, the watch, the watcher, by the way. Huh? You could just press, you just, can build your your project uh, from the command line when you after you've done your UI changes. It probably would be the way that scales better because Watchify is fun when you have some sp small project, but with with hacks completion based on saving files, uh, so it would generate a lot of errors. But yeah, it, it should work. <coughs> no reason. That's the watch. Uh, Great. <clears throat> uh, do uh, J6 uh, validate it in uh, compile time? Yes, it is compiled. I can show you that. Uh, if I can show you the view, the JS. So the J6 is compiled into, so the render function of the view is here, and in render it does it does React, create element, H2, styles, counter, and the binding, HR, create element, button, etc., etc., etc. That's what it does. And uh, if I would go and take the, the build, and if I make that not a debug build, right, if I remove the, the debug, we need to remove React hot. Uh, if I rebuild that, and this is the inline syntax. So it creates an object with type of the properties, then it has children, etc., etc. So it generates inline objects. This is really state of the art. This is, this is as, as far as Babel goes to optimize your, even possibly further because we can do some compile time 
merging of, especially when you use the spreads, we can at compile time merge the objects instead of using object assign. Um, and, and you can imagine that it's a lot, it's, it is measurably faster if you have a complex DOM that you just have JSON objects like that in your code instead of um, function calls which do some poking and logic and verifying attributes and stuff. More questions? Cool. Thank you.